This video is intended to give a familiarization of the interface in AgOpen GPS. Deeper instruction on how to use the features will be in later videos, so please check the playlist. Also, as these videos become available, we will link them into this video, so you can use it to jump to further information. At the top of the screen, there is a help icon. If you click this and then click anything else, you will get some help as to what the function is. Next to that is your speed over land. Currently 0.00, .00 as the simulator isn't moving. And next to it, a GPS quality indicator. If you click it, you'll get some additional information pop up. At the top left, there is a line that regularly changes different information of interest. If you find something you prefer to keep, hit the play button to stop it playing. Below that, an up, right arrow. If you click this, you can pan the working machine around the window. This might be helpful if you have a webcam overlaying the screen, for example. At the top left, we have the settings menu. This menu allows you to set up where you would like to store your fields and implements, and which language you would like the program to operate in. Then, we have the display menu. Here, we can customize how we want the screen to look, whether we prefer overhead views, 3D, certain colors, night mode, and even change the brightness of your tablet. Next is the tools menu. We'll cover what the wizards and charts do in a later video. Then, we have the field menu. We can load from ISO XML, from Google Earth style KML, create a new field, create a new field from an existing, open a field, drive in, which is where it opens the nearest field based on our current location, and close the open field. Important to note is that if you are using the simulator and open a field, you may find yourself a little distance away from it. So zoom out using the plus and minus signs at the top right of the screen. Now, we have the field operations menu. It is here where we will set up boundaries, headlands, tram lines and such. We can place flags at known locations, delete the worked area and set up a recorded path. Notice the icon is only available if we have a field open. Next we have the configuration menu. Here we will define vehicles, implements and setups and basic parameters for a GOPEN GPS. On the tractors menu we can select the type of steering, for example whether it is rear steered, traditional or articulated. We can enter various dimensions of the machine and it is important to get these accurate. We can set the maximum speed that a machine will turn at, the minimum it will engage at, the maximum it will disengage at, and various other settings. These will all be gone over in a later video. The attachment style, whether lifted and three-point. Trailed in sections, front mounted or trailed. Again, all the dimensions can be input here and these will change depending on what type of implement you have. There are settings for the GPS antenna type and whether you would like an alarm if RTK is lost. Settings for U-turn. Settings for the machine module, not a standard part of AgOpen GPS, if you have one. Settings for tram lines. Various things you may wish to turn on and off on a GOPEN GPS in the background. On which buttons you would wish to have on these menus, you might not wish to have them all in every circumstance. So you can turn off ones you are not interested in. Next, this icon shows the set steering angle versus the actual steering angle. If you click it, the dialog where we will do all our configuration for our steering system will appear. This will require a separate video and we will go over these settings in detail later. Notice however this arrow at the bottom, it will bring up additional settings. 
It's important to note that anything that you change in these additional settings will require you to press send and save as these get sent to the AgOpen GPS board itself. All the settings that are here without the blue arrow do not require you to press send. This button provides quick access to AgIO. It is important you do not hide it by pressing the X at the top. As this will close AgIO, simply click on AOG to return to operation. Along the bottom, the first icon will straighten the display of the implement behind you, if for any reason it's not correct. You can also choose the color to paint the worked area. Bring up additional field information. You can mark the location of any items of interest in your field, such as a large stone to return to later. This menu will expand when you have a field open and notice that it disappears itself after a short time. The steering wheel at the bottom will engage auto steer. Next above will turn on and off the painting of worked areas automatically. The yellow icon above will allow you to turn sections on and off manually and the lines above will select AB lines and curves. The functions of all of these will be explained in a later video. The bar at the bottom can be used to control the tractor in the simulator. You can turn left and right by dragging the scroll bar left and right or using the left and right arrows on your keyboard. You can speed up and slow down by using the up and down arrows on screen, or on your keyboard. The stop button will bring the tractor to an immediate halt. And the numbers next to the reset button will recenter the steering. And that's pretty much it. The interface is pretty simple. And in future videos, we'll go over how to perform functions such as setting up your fields, your tractor, the steering, and all general operation. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for more AOG videos.